I'm Craig Johnson. I'm the head of the Ecology and Biodiversity Centre in IMAS. Uh, my role in this particular project is as one of uh, three principal investigators. The project is really about the effects of climate change on uh, this kelp, Eclonia radiata. It's the single most important kelp in southern Australia. It extends from Western Australia right through to northern New South Wales and around Tasmania. It's a really, really important species in terms of forming habitat for a whole raft of other species. And it's a very important question to know how that species is going to respond to climate change. So yeah, it's the first time we've, we've tried this, so we're just hoping it's going to go smoothly without a hitch. So I'm Kane, I'm a PhD student at IMAS, uh, based out of Utahs, and we're here at Mariah Island on the east coast of Tassie, and today we're actually installing some artificial reefs. And I'm looking at how uh, the common kelp, Aclonia, modifies its physical environment, and then how those modifications feed back to affect the kelp itself. Yep, these are the artificial reefs, we're just dropping them on the uh, GPS coordinates. There you go, then. Yeah, so the plan is tomorrow and Wednesday we'll have a pretty big team of divers out here. I guess it'll be the type of day where we might spend three or four hours underwater. The bricks are down there in the big bulk bags at the moment and the racks are down there. So the racks have to be put together and labelled first. Um, similar to the, what the guys are doing here with the wire. And then once that's done they'll be positioned and the bricks will go on them. Um, but yeah, everything underwater just takes so much longer. That's going to be a massive... Um, part of what we're doing tomorrow is just moving the bricks, even if it's a couple of metres, just with the amount of bricks that are under there. The project itself uh, will run over about three and a half years. This particular experiment will need to be in the water for at least 18 months, uh, maybe slightly longer than that, depending on uh, the responses that we see. Several tonnes of concrete and steel going into the bottom to, to make this array. Uh, the array is distributed over about a hectare, a little bit more than a hectare of space. It's set up uh, in relatively shallow water, um, six to seven metres on the sand, well away from any other kelp, so that the other kelp doesn't influence the outcome of the, uh, of the experiment. Really, by any, uh, by any measure, this is a, a large and ambitious project. It's been about eight weeks since we've put the reefs in and to begin with there was a lot of sand dwelling species which was uh, expected because the racks are currently were originally just put on sand flats uh, but we are actually starting to get a lot of reef dwelling, dwelling species come onto the reefs uh, so a lot of small leather jackets and small weed fish and it's actually quite interesting because they're not particularly mobile species they're not species you'd expect to be early colonizers that are coming out and regularly searching for new habitat they're quite sedentary, kind of not your typical um, looking fish, so they're not swimming very far distances you'd expect. So it's quite interesting that they're settling the reef and they found the reefs already. And that's ranging from the small reefs all the way up to the large reefs. Uh, we have noticed the denser, spe the denser patches with more kelp are actually, se they seem to be attracting more uh, organisms to them, both fish and other species of algae. It hasn't been quite long enough yet to really get a good idea of whether or not um, or what type of algae is settling the reefs, but the fish, which are a lot more mobile, they seem to be responding a bit quicker. And what we're really looking forward to winter, uh, the end of autumn and winter, which is the peak reproductive season for Aclonia, uh, which is the common kelp, the species that we're working on. Uh, and it, when it starts to reproduce, hopefully uh, a lot of the spores that reproduce will settle on the reefs and then we'll start seeing the juveniles come through. So that's really exciting. And this is only the very beginning of the study and we're already noticing um, some really interesting things like the different fish that are coming on and the different effects of patch size and kelp density. But we still have a long way ahead of us. This is actually a long-term study. We still have about 15 to 18 months to go. So hopefully as that time goes on and it moves through the peak reproductive period for the kelp, which is in winter, we're going to start see seeing some really nice responses. And so the transplanting of the kelp that we did onto these artificial racks or these reefs, uh, we did this to look at the population structure of the kelp, but it actually has a, a side effect that we're learning the practicalities of transplanting kelp or, or restoring damaged kelp forests, which might in the future be a method um, to restore damaged habitats. For example, on the east coast, where there's the sea urchin problem causing widespread kelp destruction and barren formation. And if we can apply the skills that we've learned from this project to um, reforesting or rejuvenating those habitats, that could be really exciting and we might be able to um, repair some of those damaged, damaged habitats.